two more minutes okay so uh, but, but in the meantime if you have any question any doubt from the previous modules that we have completed so then you can ask or maybe from your class test also if you have any question any doubt that you can ask now after one or two minutes couple of minutes we'll be starting with our fourth module that is basically about gear and gear trains okay we have covered the first module those, all those about mechanism etc then we have discussed about the uh, cam okay cam design how how it is working all those cam mechanism okay the second module we have left for towards the end so that if you physically come here somehow then we can interact and we can do that thing or otherwise towards the end we'll be doing that okay so today we'll be going for the fourth module that is about the gears and gear trims so just before starting the this particular module uh, let me ask you if you have any doubt, any question you can ask, or otherwise we'll start. Sir, I have doubt in that degree of freedom problem Three. from class test one. Okay, what kind of doubt do you have? Means, sir, I was confused to identify that how many type of that slide that was a sliding pair or not. Actually, there were three problems, degree of freedom problems. So which one basically you're talking Second about? Second one, sir. Second one, this test tube type thing was there. Okay, second one. Second one, okay, okay. We'll, we'll discuss, no problem. So I think you already. So this one. You're talking about this one, right? Sir, no, 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 sir. First one, first one, sorry. Uh, so this one. Okay, so so this one, I think I have, uh, once again, I have given you as uh, assignment. Yes, because I have seen that most of you have not attended yes, this one. Okay, so uh, I will not be giving the exact answer now because I have given this as an assignment. Okay, but uh, any specific doubt if you have, you can ask me. So I will not be right now solving the whole thing. Sir, yeah. I have calculated it, but I have a doubt because the well, degree of freedom is coming way much more bigger than it should come. A degree of freedom, sometimes it may be two, three or that kind of thing also it may happen, but how much you have obtained? Sir, more than five. More than cases. five, it should not be. No, it's it's somewhere you have made mistake. Okay, sir. Because see, from our previous discussion, what we have discussed, most of the constant mechanism, they generally have a degree of freedom of what? How much? Most of the practical constraint mechanisms. They generally have degree of freedom of one. one. Okay. They generally have degree of freedom of one. But we can also have mechanism where uh, we can have degree of freedom more than one. Okay. That's possible. It's not like impossible thing, that kind of thing. Okay. Two or three, that kind of thing, it might happen. Okay. Depending on the number of independent motion and like that. But our in most of the cases, our in, importance is like basically we want to give specific input and we want to do some specific output. It has to undergo certain constant motion. It should be able, it has to be predictable, right? And it should be able to do certain tasks. We are not making all those mechanisms for fun. We are, we are uh, designing them, we are manufacturing them to, so as to accomplish something. So as to give us some kind, certain kind of the, like motion so that we can accomplish certain design tasks, right? So in those cases, in most of the cases, you, you get a degree of freedom of one or uh, one strain uh, like mechanisms, okay? But uh, degree of freedom more than one, that's possible, okay? But five, uh, I don't think it's, uh, for this case, it is five. And five degree of freedom, if you're getting for a, uh, like, mechanism that you want to use for certain tasks, then it's a very, uh, like, uh, I'm not right directly denying the fact, okay? But right now, I have not actually come across that. There may be some, okay? I don't know right now. Okay, where there are five uh, mechanism with degree of freedom five. I have not basically come across that. Okay, so but uh, if it becomes five, then controlling of it will be difficult. Okay, you cannot like uh, it will be difficult if you just degree of freedom will be five. Then like how many inputs you are going to five individual inputs and like what kind of motion you are going to get? It will be very difficult even if it is if you, even if you can construct that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, okay. any specific doubt that you want to ask with respect to this? Five is wrong. Five is wrong. That I can tell you. For this particular question, at least. Sir, um, I have one more another question, sir. How many pair, sliding pairs are there, sir? 
<laughs> is look look for the sliders okay you go through the if you have any guides if you can see that some slider kind of thing it is there piston kind of thing sir, or slider kind of thing sir, then oh, one yes. more thing sir, sir yes. that test tube thing you have seen on that one link from the hinge it's doing that test tube yeah. thing yes this sir, one you are talking about okay yes 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 sir i have one i have doubt that it's it is a sliding pair or or a constraint <laughs> so i have the main doubt <laughs> Okay, so actually, if I tell that, uh, <laughs> most of the things is solved. Okay, let's so still. The main problem so is that only. I, I I am giving you some hint. Okay, so you can consider like as if it is working as a guide. This this test tube like thing. Okay, as if it is working like a guide. Okay. Now now I think if you are you should get the answer. I think. So still not yeah. clear, sir. It is acting like a guide. This testing like thing. If it is acting like a guide, you can deduce whether it will become slide, <laughs> sliding or not. Okay. Okay. It okay, is acting sir. like a guide. Okay. Now I hope you already got the answer. So okay. I consider so, it as a sliding pair. Uh, I think he tester is saying okay. So what I am saying is as I have given this an uh, assignment. Okay. i have if you can uh, go through if you go through your assignment then actually by looking at your performance in the past test one most of you have not actually gone for this or some of you have done it okay but maybe wrong or some okay i have not got, gone through all the papers okay uh, so that's why i have considered this as an assignment okay so that you can once again try it otherwise just if you have suppose if you give get or you don't get some marks or like that if you just leave it like that then some of the concepts just like this kind of confusion just like you had not so that kind of confusion will not be clear so it's better you can go through it and i think of uh, other two i think these two are very uh, easy one well, easy only okay so but yes one thing that i have come across uh, in your copy you people are reluctant to draw the drawings so see if you can see here it is written use proper neat and level diagram wherever applicable so it is expected that in the question if you are suppose if you are talking about explaining the slider crank mechanism working you should draw it okay uh, so like that apart from that for finding out degree of freedom of this uh, uh, problems it's it's a must you have to draw it most of some of you are not drawing it and if you don't draw it and if you say suppose n equal to number of uh, link n equal to suppose 12 okay so if you say like that so how can how can anyone know whether you have just guessed it or you have actually properly calculated it or like that okay so uh, it should be it should be considered properly okay you have to draw it you have to show in the figure so like this one okay fixed link one so this one will become second link this is the whole tertiary link three is four and this is fifth link this is sixth seventh we have number eight this link is number nine this is once again ten so this is eleven so this becomes twelve correct so uh, this way you have to show it you have to number them otherwise you will know whether you have just guessed it so if you write n equal to 11 or like that and if you mark them properly suppose you have written n equal to 11 but you have shown up to 11 uh, you have marked them properly suppose somehow you have to, suppose this link you have missed it then if you you can go for 11 then also you will be you can expect somewhat more marks because up to the other 11 you have done it properly so step markings are always there but if you don't draw the diagrams then actually i should not give you any marks okay understood importance of this diagram in the while solving degree of freedom problems yes or no yes sir okay okay similarly this one i think this is very easy here one uh, this is fixed link we have to number one okay this link is second link this whole disk is, is kind of third link okay and very easily you can say it's a cam and follower only okay so it is oscillating kind of follower that we have about this hinge it get oscillate okay and uh, here what kind of pair this will make two and three because of this particular context what kind of pair will have in between two and three yes this will be a higher pair 
okay and others here one and two two uh, like similarly this and three one and three they will be lower pair so n equal to three okay and uh, these are two lower pairs we have okay p1 we have two and uh, p2 that is higher pair we have one okay so if you use the formula three whole it, we don't have any redundancy here okay so if you use the formula for f okay so we get one sir yeah whatever after calculation whatever you get that will be correct okay minus two minus two p1 p1 lower pair let me write lower pair otherwise writing two p1 will be difficult okay minus higher pair okay so that will give that is going to give you the answer okay three whole into uh three minus one two six minus five okay the answer will be one okay so this is for this answer is one for this similarly we have to find out what are the number of uh, we can uh, the here you don't have to go for suppose finding it's a very small one okay you don't have to go for finding suppose binary joint one binary joint two or like that if directly you can one and two becomes one okay so that that way it will be easy but here for the second question okay you should go for if, if you find out the joints it becomes easy okay so you find out what kind of joint we have binary or ternary so this is what kind of joint it will be Anyone? What kind of join it is? Binary or ternary? It's a binary. Okay. One and two binary. Two and three. Only two links are there. Similarly, three and four. Okay. Three and six. Then six and seven. Then three and this eight. Okay. Then uh, this one. Nine and four. We have this one nine and five. Similarly, five and eleven binary only. This one five and ten. Then one and ten. Then seven and twelve. Yes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, similarly, this one, thirteen, one and twelve, thirteen. And what about this? What about this joint? Anyone? Yes, it's a ternary because this link, we have this whole link and this link joint here. Okay, so it's a ternary. So, ternary only one turn so how many binary joints we have 13 yes yeah, so we have a top 10 binary join equal to uh, 13 okay and uh, ternary join equal to one okay we have number of pairs as 12 okay so from their binary join and ternary join uh, is there any higher pair any higher pair? No, sir. No, h equal to zero. So uh, lower pair we have right now. As it will be difficult for me to uh, give the uh, subscript, so I am using h for higher pair, l for lower pair. So lower pair, how to find out? For thirteen number of binary joint, so it will be thirteen uh, bin uh, equivalent uh, binary pair plus for one ternary joint, we will be having two. two. Right, uh, equivalent. Okay, so it's a 15. So from there, what you can find out using f equal to 3 whole into this one. So f will become 3 into your uh, n is 12 minus 1 minus uh, lower pair is 15 minus higher pair is 0. So answer will be how much? Whatever you get. Okay. So, Correct. Uh, 3. Uh, yes, 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 this will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 15. Yes, correct, correct. 2 into 15, okay. So 11 into 3, 33 minus 30, it will be 3. Yes, 3. Okay, yes, sir.
So this is the answer for this. This one and this one I am not going to solve properly, but I have given you the hint. So it is basically as an assignment problem. Okay. So others, I think other problems it will be easy only. Other things was easy. How did you find this? How, whether it was too easy, moderate, difficult. Too easy, easy, moderate, difficult. But how is your view? Was there anything that we have not discussed? Definitely not. Everything we have already discussed, right? So, uh, okay. So I think there is no further doubt. Or is there anything else? Do you have any more question? Any query? No, sir. Okay. So then uh, we'll be giving you. Uh, I'll be giving you quick glimpse about the course model that is basically about gears and gear trains. So I think uh, being a mechanical engineer or you can say being a normal science graduate, uh, not graduate, even high science or like that, or from even from our day to day life, I, I am sure all of you have already heard about the words gear. You might not have heard about the word gear train, but I am very sure all of you have heard about gears as well as you have seen it. Okay, so uh, in the workshop also, I think you have already seen gears, or maybe even in your uh, while you were uh, in your childhood, even I think you you most of you have played with certain toys, maybe cars, some toy car, or something else, whatever, whatever be it. And I'm quite sure most of you have uh, broken some of them, and you have undergone some. You have seen some uh, uh, toothed this kind of thing. Okay, I, if I am talking about the toys, maybe you have seen the plastic or polymer, some gears, okay, so, some ring like thing, okay, something like this. You might have seen something. Uh, sorry. They might have come across something circular kind of thing, forget about my drawing and having some teeth here, right? Most of you might have seen it. Okay, don't, don't uh, look at my drawing. This drawing is right now very horrible. It is, it is difficult to draw in laptop. So I think uh, some of you, have, most of you have seen it, right? So those those uh, elements which you have used, which were used in the toys, etc., for some transmission purpose, for uh, for different, uh, they are doing certain tasks mostly about the transmission and all. Okay, so those are nothing but the you have that is that is, I think is your encounter with gears. So now apart from this kind of shape, which this right now this is very horrible shape. Okay, so apart from this kind of uh, gears, which you have come across in in your uh, like childhood, there are actually different types of gears, and I we, uh, like different those things we'll be discussing. Okay, classification of different gears and all. But I believe most of you have already seen it, and I believe I also believe most of you already have some idea about gears, or you can say why it is use, use of gears so just before going to the uh, formal lecture can i can i have some interaction with you that means what, what do you think why these gears are used what is the importance of it to reduce or increase the energy transmission energy transmission okay you will be using the word energy or something else Okay. Okay. No problem. Just sort of anything else. Any any more idea? Anyone else would like to add on, modify, add, or whatever? Increase or decrease the motion. Okay. Increase or decrease the motion. Okay. So power transmission. Power transmission. Okay. Okay, and anyone? Okay, so uh, I think people are saying whatever. Okay, so now uh, most of your uh, the direction or your sense, whatever you wanted to say, maybe uh, you have the idea from your answer. I can get the. Uh, I can figure out that you generally have the idea, but maybe the proper terminology or proper terms or maybe some other 
uh, implication of or importance of gear maybe you don't have so basically you see uh, what may happen so uh, as you are saying like uh, definitely from transmission and all those uh, motion etc okay so yes all of them are interrelated okay what uh, interrelated with one another okay so now what may happen sometimes see your uh, in most of the cases what basically happens suppose you can you have uh, some uh, right now motion okay which is at a particular location and uh, you want to have that particular motion in a particular sense suppose rotational motion we are talking about mostly okay because will be uh, these gears or you'll see that they are basically uh, rot rotating element only okay so now uh, what may happen sometimes suppose you may have some uh, motion somewhere suppose on a particular stuff you have that particular you have a particular motion maybe which is maybe the output of your uh, from a motor or whatever okay so but you have the, got the prime mover somewhere okay along with the shaft that we have and actually your intention or your requirement is somewhere else okay so uh, and you require suppose that kind of rotational motion only but somewhere else which is not exactly at the point where you have got the particular motion okay that means you want to transmit it so in those cases basically you have to have some elements or some mechanism that you have which will be able to do this particular task so now in those kind of pictures these gears or proper selection or missing of proper gears it comes into picture so one possibility of using gears is like uh, whenever you want to transmit motion from one shaft to another okay or between it may be between a shaft or as well as a slide also okay so in those cases basically uh, like we we go for uh, using gears okay so now uh, your requirement maybe just like i have discussed suppose in a particular location and a particular stuff you have got that particular motion but suppose at a particular some other location which is not exactly that particular stuff but at a particular another stuff maybe you want to transmit the motion then you can use gears similarly some other possibilities are also there sometimes what may happen suppose you are having a particular clockwise directional motion which have, you have already obtained but suppose for accomplishing your task maybe you want anti-clockwise directional motion so now how we can accomplish it once again this also is possible by the proper successful you messing of two gears later on we'll see how basically it is working but right now i'm just talking about the, some of the possibilities some of the utilization okay so that's that can be one possibility similarly sometimes you may have suppose uh suppose you are having a particular motor whose output is suppose 1440 rpm but suppose for doing your a particular job done you don't require that kind of rpm suppose your 500 rpm is your requirement but your uh, available rpm is suppose uh, at the level of 1440 or 1500 or whatever whatever rpm okay that kind of motion that you have but to accomplish your task you know that suppose you need to have a uh, uh, rpm of suppose 500 uh, rpm okay so now how to accomplish it so once again if you can select proper uh, gear gear and engine then this kind of uh, motion conversion okay like uh, either going you know, like stepping up or stepping down that's also is possible similarly as this is uh, if 1500 rpm you have and you require for 500 rpm to accomplish your task that's also is possible similarly if you want to have suppose 2000 rpm 3000 rpm suppose from that particular uh, available rpm that means you want to increase it that also is possible with the help of proper selection of gears okay up to this much some of the application areas have you understood yes okay now apart from that sometimes the situation may be suppose you have the particular rotational motion available okay and uh, suppose it is moving in a clockwise direction but at a particular other location you want the motion but now once again clockwise direction motion only previously we have discussed about suppose here you require a clockwise directional fashion okay so that is available and anti-clockwise you you want it so that's also is possible we have discussed and similarly if we want the similar kind of motion that means in the clockwise sense only that also is possible for, but for that uh, intermediate gears we have to have which we will see later on okay how basically we accomplish all those things okay so basically this this is the basic you can say if you have to discuss about gears and uh, gear trains then we can just say that these gears they generally are used to transmit motion in between or from one shaft to another or between a shaft as well as a slide later on you will see sometimes uh, uh, maybe i believe all of you have already seen uh, those uh, in the late mission all of you have seen right 
in the workshop all of you have done uh, your practical with let, let machine also and they are sometimes you sense the speed of it by sensing by, by engaging proper gears so that's also is there okay sensing the speed that means sometimes stepping up stepping down that kind of thing similarly slide also we have okay so all those kind of cases we can accomplish by the use of proper gears now generally these gears and uh these gears okay they a single per, a gear whenever we are saying that gear okay to uh, get that particular motion conversion or uh, transmission of motion from one shop to another basically we must have at least two gears which has to be properly engaged okay so it's a very important thing so it has basically positive drive they are known as the positive drives okay and like success actually it has to be the gears has to be in properly they has to be properly engaged and you, you use the word mess messing of gears m e s h messing or sometimes mating m a t i n g so basically this messing or mating of gears they what does they imply they imply that the two gears okay by this time all of you already know so the in the gears basically we have some teeth right so from the figures uh, or maybe you can say from your previous knowledge you already i believe already you have seen some gears and all maybe I'll, i can show also maybe some figures okay so suppose if you look at this particular figure see basically uh, we have to have we'll be we'll be having some teeth okay if you see gear a is there gear b is here so now to uh, suppose gear a is the driver suppose gear b is the driven okay so in that particular sub this is the location of the sub okay and this is the location of the under sub suppose uh, let let's consider the smaller gear is the driver one and bigger is the suppose driven so that means the smaller gear it is mounted on this particular sub that means here we have got the motion available okay already the prime movement is already here and we wanted that we want to transfer it up to suppose this particular sub we have to rotate okay so in that particular case case we have to select a proper set of gears okay the dimensions are also the dimensions okay the module the words will later on discuss what does it mean okay module and all okay so those are also important and ultimately proper engagement of them which you can see here okay proper engagement of the teeth okay or the messing of teeth m e s h mess messing of teeth also known as mating both are all are having same meaning okay we don't use the word suppose the two gears are connected or like that generally we don't use their uh, connected with each other okay we can we can use it but the proper words are like they are in mass proper mass m e s h or they are mating gears okay they are that means connected okay they are engaged it's its meaning is like that okay so now in that particular case as you can see generally the gears on the periphery of it okay so we generally have those teeth and all okay and uh, actually how does it accomplish whatever we are saying that actually a transmit motion from one sub to another so in that particular case it is actually accomplished by successfully engaging the teeth of the two mating gears so as uh, by this time we will then know to uh, we use it to transmit motion from one sub to another and to do so we must have a minimum of we, the requirement is a minimum of two gears which has to be in proper mass if we don't have two gears only if we if you say i only have one particular gear or I, and i want to transmit motion from suppose a particular shaft to another shaft which is nearby so in that particular case definitely you cannot do anything so a single gear when you can use it or what kind of use do you have for a single gear you can show your anger with the help of single gear you can maybe it's <laughs> you can throw it on some some someone and he will get hurt that kind of use you can do with the help of a single gear actually a single gear if you only you are only having a particular single gear only and if you want to transfer motion from one particular sub to another it's not possible we you have to have a minimum of two gears which has to be in proper mass okay so now in general so basically as we have discussed that they are the this particular task of transmission of motion then from one sub to another it is accomplished by successfully engaging the teeth so all if you can look at this particular figure okay later on we'll show the animation also we'll see the animation etc so actually you see that a particular set of gears are only uh, teeth of the gears are only in contact so even though we have got teeth throughout this particular periphery okay but 
at a given time at a particular time you can see that so actually a particular set of uh, only teacher and only only in context so we use some words like contact ratio and and all which we'll be discussing later on okay so so successfully they engage at a time at a particular time at at a particular time okay all the teach will not be engaged and all so basically what basically happens uh, they successfully engage and transmit the motion okay so now from this particular figure of uh, the teeth of the gears from this particular figure as we have seen that basically the teeth are in contact okay and thereby uh, force transmission torque transmission all those things happens and uh, we get the movement once again in the previous subsequent classes it will be more clear okay so right now from this particular up to this much whatever we have discussed from this knowledge can you tell me whether it will be a higher pair mechanism or lower pair mechanism I believe all of you already recall higher pair is basically the links. I can consider this as one element link uh, gear B as another element, two element we can consider, okay, which are in contact, two links are in contact, you can consider like that. So in that particular case, we already know higher pair and lower pair. Lower pair means generally they have got surface contact and higher pair line or point contact. So as we are saying that to the teeth okay at a particular location of the teeth only okay so they will be in contact so generally they form higher pair mechanism okay but uh, we'll see uh, there is another uh, gear gear uh, that is known as the uh, worm and worm wheel okay so basically uh, they are having surface contact so in that particular case that particular double threaded uh rotate worm and worm wheel they becomes a lower pair mechanism but uh, in general if someone asks you whether uh, gears they will be higher pair or lower pair so it's a higher pair mechanism why because the teeth basically the mid if i suppose this is a teeth from one gear okay suppose this is the teeth from another meeting gear suppose gear a from this side and uh, this is other okay i'm not showing the other teeth so basically they will be con they will be con uh, like at a particular point actually which is known as the pitch point later on we'll see all those terminologies so basically that contact is there and if we consider the 3d view okay so throughout the length or throughout the thickness of the gear if you consider the contact is there so then this particular point okay throughout the thickness it becomes a line contact so that's why is gears okay as the contact is between the uh, teeth from both the mating gears so it has got a line contact generally and that makes it a higher pair understood up to this much yes sir okay next uh, will be like today uh, only another point we will be discussing so generally what happens as even though we are saying that it is this gears okay we generally used to transmit motion from one sub to another but the central distance between the two subs central distance means this sub distance distance between the sub so center to center from this sub okay to look at this distance so this distance is known as the central distance between the Two meeting gears or between the subs of the two meeting gears so this central distance it's not a very large one so the distance between the driving and driven sub it is comparatively or relatively smaller as compared to some other drives that we also uh, have so some other drives are i believe most of you have heard about bell drive or rope drive or chain drive so these are also some other type of drive drive means we can accomplish for this motion transmission from one sub to another so those are nothing but the drives okay so there are some apart from gear drive we all we have all those bell drive where belt is the element which if transmit the motion we have rope drive by using ropes also we can do that similarly we have chain drives okay so like if i think all of you have already seen in the bicycles and all so how the you pedal it and uh, you, you drive it okay so chain drive it's possible rope drive is there bell drive etc it is there so apart uh, apart from that we are uh, most important we are that, that we are discussing is the gear drive so this gear in case of gear drive basically what happens they are rigid kind of drive so these gears they are rigid elements generally okay but all those uh, like rope bells flat chain etc they are flexible kind of drive they undergo uh, like deformation during their working and generally this why gear drive is kind of rigid drive basically they don't undergo or in uh, ideal situation is they should not undergo any deformation during the, during the course of the transmission of motion okay so generally they are rigid drive and in that particular case this central distance 
whenever you have to use if you are talking of using uh, gears to accomplish this uh, transmission motion from one shaft to another then the central distance between uh, the two uh, shaft that is the driving shaft or driven shaft it is comparatively smaller as compared to bell drive probe drive or send drive so if your task is that from very uh, uh, up to long distance you have to go or you have to transmit motion so in that particular case even though gear drive is an effective and uh, uh, effective means but still if the central distance very uh, high okay if it is more then in, uh, it's not advisable to go for uh, this gear drive so in those cases we have uh, bell drive probe drive send drive etc etc so this is some uh, like uh, difference between this flexible drives like bell drive probe drive send drive and gear drive okay so today we will be stopping our discussion here so in the next classes we'll be discussing about some advantages how basically they work different classification etc etc okay so after this much if you have any question you can ask me or you can let me know whether the basic concept okay starting concept you have understood or not understood sir okay others what about others understood sir okay so uh, then uh, uh, if you all of you have understood and if you don't have any question we'll stop today's class here and we'll meet in the next class so thank you everyone for joining i am stopping the recording